We're ready. Is that a little light? <laughs> no okay, we're gonna call right, this. Alive. We're gonna call this finance meeting to order at seven o'clock. So we will start with old business. Um, it's been a while since we had a meeting, but we were talking about how to handle the citable offenses, how to pay for the late fees. Did we ever go forward on that? Austin, Can you hear us okay, Scott? I think it's really Can do. Said, yeah. I can hear you guys just fine. I'm in the process of sharing it on multiple pages, that's all. So do you know about that or does Scott know about that? Or? Uh, could you remind me, citable offenses for? For not paying the late fee. We had made a $100 late fee if you didn't pay your oh, rental yeah. registration, mm -hmm. but we didn't actually provide what we was going to do if they didn't pay. Right. I think Becky had said to me it needed to cite a specific code right. to be able and to be, able to be enforceable. Ever... I don't know. I don't know if Scott's talked to Becky about it, but I, I haven't had a conversation with her about it. There's been no talk of that on this side. I can't hear anyone. No talk of that on his side. Like in other words, he hasn't had That's a conversation. Said. So can you look into that for us, Scott? Sure. More on some old business. Um, on February 18th, I had sent out an email to the city attorney to ask for a written opinion about the council clerk and the previous council clerk pay, and also information about the water leak insurance that the city wanted to look into. And I'm still waiting to hear back from him on those. And Scott, I think you did send us an email a while back, but if you could refresh my memory on um, the update on Mill Street. Because the last one yeah, I have here is January 23rd. Right. So the only thing that's happening with Mill Street is it's been put in the grant uh, that we're applying for. You guys just voted on the engineering to be take place in the last council meeting. So Mill Street will be wrapped up inside of that. Is that for the all the water repairs and the brick and everything? Correct. That would be repla or that'd be replacing the sewer, the water. Uh, currently, the uh, gas is going up through there. You guys had stated that you wanted to do asphalt instead of the brick, which was significantly cheaper. And uh, however, that's when everything hit the fan with the deputy auditor taking money and you guys put it on hold. That's why I wrapped it up in the uh, grant. in the grant for next year. Okay, thank you. Did we do asphalt? I thought we were just going to go with brick. Huh? I thought we were just going with brick. No, we talked about asphalt. There was conversations of... I just didn't know we had made a decision. Yes, yeah, so there was conversations of stair concrete, which is very slippery on a steep hill. Yeah. There was conversations of replacing that same brick, which was very expensive to do to get a set back in right proper position, and then asphalt. And I think because half that street was already asphalted, yep. there was a discussion of just going back to asphalt. And the contractor was very adamant that there's no way they could make it look right and how it used to be. Just because availability of brick, especially those up there that have the shaved edges for the horse and the inclement weather. So they were very hesitant of the brick anyways. Of course, they'll do anything you're willing to pay for. But uh, they were more worried about the finished product and us not being happy with it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because those bricks are cut. The horses to yeah. They are slippery in the winter time. They are slippery. If you get still concrete, they'd even be slippery. Yep. Thank you. So 
So this is what I would like to propose um, to the committee tonight to go forward with this pool income tax. These figures are what the previous city manager gave me a while back. Um, and I see the one that I would like to go with if the rest of the committee agrees or if you want to talk about it. Um, what this is, it would be an increase. This would be for the city pool, would be an income tax. And it would be an increase of $5 for every $10,000 of income. We're currently at 1.75% and this would raise it to 1.80%. Um, an example would be if you made $20,000, you currently pay $350 and that would increase to 360. That's a $10 increase. Another example, if you made $40,000, you currently pay 700. That would increase to 720, which is a $20 increase. And according to the figures from the previous city manager, that would provide approximately $45,000 a year for the pool. So any discussions? Does anyone agree, disagree? So, okay, so if you do it as an income tax increase though, if I'm not mistaken, that'll go into general. the general fund. Therefore, is it necessarily earmarked for just the pool? You would just, so um, basically council can earmark in the levy, council can earmark anything. So uh, Athens, I believe, um, has uh, part of their general, uh, excuse me, part of their income tax goes straight to street funds. But we wasn't going to do a levy because that was property tax. Right, right. I'm sorry. Yes, their income tax question on the ballot specifically says part of it goes to street. So basically, if you were to say on the ballot, if count, in council could do this, um, a 0.5% increase in the income tax with that increase going wholly to uh, pool operations, which I think it would, it might actually read recreation fund because you have to legally state which fund it's going into. Right. Um, which I think is, we've had it in the past. It used to be like an 80, 85. Uh, yeah. And then there would still be a split of the rest. The 1.75 would still be split between general and capital. capital. Um, but that 0 0.05 would be earmarked. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be my my big thing. If it's if it's not necessarily earmarked just for pool, then it well, could just we, be used for anything. No, we definitely want it earmarked for pool. So we just have to put that in the in the. Yeah, you would have, and you would have to decide which way you want to do it. So one is you could put it in the ballot language. I think my understanding is you can, okay. or you could decide to make it part of the split, like council does with capital in general. So you I would think say ballot language would be. Better. Yeah, because you're going to have to. You're going to have to tell people that you're increasing their income tax four or five percent, and it's going to be earmarked for them. That's why I read it. Right. So that and I would just, the only thing I'd add, I think uh, the prior city manager's numbers were right pretty close. The only thing I would add is that the increase would probably be a, a little several less thousand, less. a little lower, because yeah. income tax revenues keep coming in under the Correct. last five years. So maybe 42 or maybe 41. But still a huge amount for the pool that's almost half its operation i personally think that um now that um everything that's kind of come to light here recently with the deputy auditor i i would probably look to forego it for this year just to see where we're going to end up well, i mean the pool's probably going to be low this year anyway but i'm just yeah. curious on what the is the pool even going to open oh i did drop it down we was going what um tony had first proposed was the 10 percent, which would have brought in 90,000 and I thought, like Taylor said, now that we really do have more money to run the pool than we thought we did, that we could get away with the 45,000, which is, like I said, only a $5 increase on every 10,000 you make. This, I mean, in my- And that would start funding like for repairs, like to start a fund when yeah. something goes wrong, we're not gonna have to take it from the general fund or somewhere else, we can start building up. Yeah. Something. Well, council could even move it back to the aquatic center fund, which has been shut because it has no money in it. Well, but, but if you move this back to you could you could set you could separate it back to the pool fund, um, and I I think it I mean I think it's a workable idea. It'll increase for repairs and upgrades, which the pool really needs. Um, the only thing would be is I've heard a lot of talk of lowering the admission rates, 
if you lower the emission rates and then raise this, you kind of defeat the purpose. Um, so that would be my only suggestion. So, so my two cents would be that I think it'd be really tough to do that right now. Um, I think that if 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 we didn't have the black cloud that was over us for you know in the past, if going forward, we may be generating enough money coming from the aquatic center alone that we may be able to build up a, a fund by just utilizing it. If I'm not mistaken, you had estimates that we probably would have made a little bit of money last year, actually, had we not had some of the, you know, problems that we had. And so if that's the case, what if, what if the last five years had been like that? Would we have a kitty that we would have been able to, you know, make those repairs for? So I'm just thinking, I think it might be a little bit premature to, you know, to raise that. I think it's also a tough, uh, you know, tough time to necessarily increase uh, people's taxes for that. My opinion would be we've got to show we're good stewards of people's money before you start asking for more of it for, you know, on their income tax. So, and I'm not saying that anyone here has had any role in that. I'm just saying that. I'm just following up on Tony's suggestion. And I think it was a good suggestion because I mean, Betty Jo and everybody talks about what the pool means to the city. And I, I do not disagree. My my boys worked there last year. I, I don't disagree. And we always with my... seem to be borrowing money for repairs constantly. Yeah, so that is thing we need to look at is, is getting rid of that, that liner. I would add that one thing. Concrete. I'm sorry, Dan. Oh, good. Um, if council wanted to, I mean, I'm injecting myself in the process a little bit, but one idea could be you could send off the request to the county auditor to uh, get this process started of getting it on the ballot. Um, and then by that time, we'll know better whether the pool can functionally open this year due to the pandemic. Because one thing that is concerning is if the pool can't open this year, let's say we don't get through those phases the governor has suggested, uh, the rec fund could conceivably lose enough money. We don't have the 10, 15, 20,000 in there to start the pool like we we spend more opening up the pool at the beginning um, when there's no revenue coming in for the pool, if that makes sense. And so maybe that could be an option in council's tool belt to say you are ready to go for this income tax question if we don't have the money to start the pool, say for 2021, if the pandemic continues to impact us. I don't know if that makes so sense. So this doesn't start for 2021 though, right? I mean, the income tax. Because we wouldn't pass it till they vote in November, right? Well, they vote right, in but November, I mean, it would go in effect January 1. Yeah, January yeah. 2021. I just meant that getting it through the process of the readings and stuff so that yeah. you're ready to move if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, it's up, it's up to you guys. I just. Well, I, I want to at least bring it to council. I mean, that way. Do I have a second or no? Yeah, I'm fine. Is that all right with you, Corey? I mean, it, it doesn't really matter what I think, but you know, I, I think it's premature at this point. I mean, we care. Well, to me, it matters what you think. I mean, just because we don't agree, it still matters to me what you think. No, I think it's, but this, since we're talking about income tax, uh, Wanda, before she had left, had asked me um, to ask about income tax projections, um, what you're anticipating, um, you know, with the, you know, the delay of uh, income tax, you know, return filings and, and with the current pandemic, I mean, have you, I don't know if any, if you currently have any projections that you've come across or with, uh, you know, maybe other, what other municipalities or, you know, auditors have been sharing in terms of what they anticipate in a drop as far as income tax for sure. you know, this, this um, year. I don't want to take away from, this, was your motion completed or? Yeah. Okay. I just want to, didn't want to take away from that. Um, so on the second page of what I gave you guys, I actually had part of needed conversations, income tax and gas tax uh, projections. Uh, in my conversation with um, the county auditor, uh, state conversations, and also I'm on a, I don't know what you'd call it, like a soundboard of fiscal officers from all around the state. I saw a question come through from Marysville today. It's auditors, income tax administrators, so on and so forth so that we can all ask a question to the group and see what's going on. Amongst those three things, what I have been hearing is that 
you have to look at this in two lenses. The one is you have, it's not like a, a normal recession where you will see declines for the entire year. What you'll see is you'll have severe declines while the economy is shut down. And then what we hope to be pretty normal uh, expectations when the economy is back up. So it's harder to project because we don't know when for sure. <laughs> like, so it could, we we some really, it could be one or two really bad months, but then back to normal. I mean, yes, it could be. And, and what you'll find is what we will find is that will on the whole year bring us down because we did not have normal months while this pandemic has been going on. But it's made this is my long way of saying it's made projections really hard. So, like, will we sure. get through phase three of the economic opening by Christmas or will we get it by July 4th? That will make a huge difference for us. So one thing I've seen is that the gas tax revenues are the ones particularly everyone is very concerned about. I said this at a council meeting Monday, where we do not anticipate uh, property tax declines. Um, most people are going to pay their property taxes, keep their homes. It doesn't seem to be so severe. We'll have homeless and that kind of problem. But for gas tax, what we're seeing is almost no travel period for, for seeing family, for vacations. And many people are not even traveling for work. I mean, we're talking about like 80% of the workforce isn't traveling to Columbus, Lancaster, Logan, sure. Athens to work. So in my conversations, we're seeing until full economic reopening, you could see 50% decline in gas tax revenues, which depending on how long that lasts could mean a fifth or larger loss for the whole year, which is pretty big. <laughs> so that's the worst one. Yeah. If, if that, if I backed that evidence up with on Wall Street today, gas prices, not gas, oil prices for a barrel of oil went negative $30, which means that now oil producers are paying refineries so, to take the oil from them because there's so little storage. They need to get it off their off their books. Time to buy. Yeah, so buy negative oil prices. It's never happened in history. Right. So in other words, the gas tax revenues are impacted the most. Income tax declines for us. Um, most of the state expects 15 to 25 percent while the economy is shut down. That is a huge number. That's like five times bigger than 2008 recession. Um, however, for Nelsonville, I'll just admit, I don't know for sure what it means because Hocking College, the school district, Rocky Boot, are largely operational. They're just working from home. Right. And those three make up the lion's share of our income tax revenue. So obviously our restaurants are either shut down or at partial capacity, our square is mostly shut down. Stewart's is unfortunately shut down. The, uh, uh, what am I trying to think of? The fest, the big fest is canceled to my understanding. Oh, okay. um, we don't know. We, we expect a decline, but will it be the, as big as the state's 20% or will it be smaller because we have a lot of government? Uh, I'm not sure. So I don't know if that helps. I, I gave one example. I can't give specific examples because of income tax privacy, but one employer who paid their withholdings from their employees just this morning uh, it's a non-restaurant. It is a large organization. There's only things I can really say without being too specific. Uh, and it's non-government. Is uh, Their check was 50% less. Their wages worked in town was 50% less than two months ago. That's a huge decline, right? Yeah. Um, but when we open back up, let's say in July, will it go right back to normal? Probably, but I don't know. Yeah. Hope so, right? But yeah. I hope so. <laughs> so I don't know. I expect declines, but I'm really unsure about um, most auditors I'm reading in this sounding board that we're on are pretty concerned about. I had, an, uh, I'll just say a local auditor to yesterday asked about layoff procedures and how to gear up for that. So I think people are concerned. Um, so another question I would have pertaining to that is, um, this may be something you have not had the opportunity to really dive into yet. I don't know how easily it would be for you to determine, uh, but of our 5,000 or so constituents within the city, um, how many of them are actually paying income tax? Now, now I don't know if, you know, and I, I don't mean that like, are they filing necessarily because everybody should be filing, but um, you know, there's some people that don't, are required to file, um, and so probably aren't paying any to the income tax. And so, percentage-wise of that, 
how many of those folks do we have? So, because what happens is the tax increase then is on is on the burden of the few, the few. So that's the other reason why I'm asking that. So, yeah. Uh, so I was uh, the more I learn, I'm basically handling income tax on my own at the moment. This is a conversation for another part of this meeting. Really, I'm sorry to get you. No, no, it's okay. It's it's okay. okay. Talking about no, it's okay. Let's get it's getting the second page out of the way. Um, so I have. I've gone through every tax form we've received to this day. Um, it's gotten as quick a review or as thorough as a review as I can do quickly because there's already thousands. If you think about all the residences, all the businesses, many residents have multiple businesses. Um, we have a lot of folks who weren't filing before. And so I had this conversation today. I talked to a resident in town. He filed. It's retirement income, so it's not taxable. But city law says that everyone has to file whether they have taxable income or not. They just have to report they don't have income. Um, he had said he didn't know as a retired person he ever had to file, so he never had. So he's an example of somebody that in the past that off, the office would have never known whether he should have paid or not have paid. And so the way I've approached this is it's like it's an education program. I think that some auditors like to go after it like we're going to go after every resident and make sure they pay every dime in the world. And we do want people to pay their fair share, but I'm finding most people just don't even know how our system works because they haven't interacted with it enough, if that makes sense. Yep. So I'm seeing lots of returns of people who's, who wrote right on it, filing for the first time. Are you sure I have to file? Do I need to file next year? So on and so forth. And I'm seeing a lot of returns with, um, uh, what's the like polite way to say this? The math is just done not correctly. <laughs> and so a lot of folks don't calculate the city income tax correctly, which ends up meaning the city gets less money unless the auditor tells them, hey, you owe us 50, not $10. Right. right. Which was not happening in the past. So like, I think there's more compliance this year, but it's like, a, it's going to be a, a whole year long education project, I think. Yeah. I don't know if that helps answer or not. I'm getting a lot of I think it does. I think it helps out a lot, I think, in general about the income tax collection in the city as yeah. a whole. It seems to be improving, so that's good. Yeah, and he's kept us pretty busy. I know I have down here somewhere uh, at the bottom of the page. So last week we sent out our first official letters, about 35, requesting income verification from people who had filed. So they did. they took their civic duty, filed their local income taxes but forgot, like say they reported business income, but didn't report a schedule from the federal government or they forgot their W-2 or whatever it is. Uh, but I have a copy of the letter. I don't know if we should, I can email it since I don't know if we should share all the same copy um, in, <laughs> during, yeah, the, yeah, no. during the pandemic. Yeah. But basically it's super polite. It's like you've not done anything incorrectly. We're not hounding you, this is not a fine. We just need your income verification so we can finish your return. And most of the people actually answered by today, which was like a few days turnaround. Yeah, that's great. Um, and one person actually said they were just glad to know somebody was finally looking at these. And I was like, <laughs> you have no idea how it feels like in our office to hear that because uh, we've been swamped with it. But um, basically, we're going to start going through this. We're going to start contacting people. We need your W-2. You filed, but you didn't pay. Uh, you paid too much. Here's your refund. We're going to make sure that this is a well-oiled machine um, by the end of this. I know there's a lot of talking. <laughs> I hope that it explains. Okay, so I think the last old business that I had was, I did not know if you had time to look at um, there's two lines for the mowing, the 100, 625, and the 230, 180, mm -hmm. as to why there was two of them at 6,000 instead of just the one. Um, I don't know if I looked at that, but Scott, I don't know if you want to take over and talk about your uh, mowing plan that seems to be going well. I don't know if that would be helpful. Sure. We've got, so all mowing is being done in-house this year. Uh, we use the $10,000 that would have been uh, spent to hire somebody to contract it out to uh, buy another zero turn mower for the guys. And uh, today alone, 
Today alone, they, they took two mowers and mowed 23 lots just today. So, uh, so far, very successful. Just a little bit of guidance and overhead uh, coverage for those guys that are knocking it out. So that was the 10000 to hire another employee. Is that what you're saying? Correct. We bought a mower with it. And I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but you said that was the full mowing list or it was close to it, right? Uh, it was almost the entire list. Yeah, that, that did not include crab tree or poly field or five other houses that the folks couldn't get access to because we're going to have to weed eat them. And uh, they're just too steep for any more that we have. So, yeah, that was all of them in one day. So this should work out pretty good, especially since uh, they don't need to be mowed every week per se. This was just the first time of the year. We just need to keep those in compliance. Also, I talked to Hootie. Uh, the guy has the contract for our ball fields down at Poly Field. And with there being no baseball season, uh, I talked with him, you know, as a result of COVID. And uh, he's willing to help us out by taking care of the mowing down there uh, since there's really not much for him to do on the uh, maintaining of the ball field side of the house. So you mean we're not using the 6000 that we set aside for the fields? to pay? We usually hired someone to do the ball fields. Correct. He's already under contract. He was put under contract end of January, 1st of February time frame. I'm not exactly sure when. So uh, he's actually, he's still maintaining the fields. However, uh, it's not required as often because we don't have baseball happening right now. So instead of canceling or messing with his contract, he's just taking on the responsibility of mowing poly field for us. Okay, thank you. And we, I can't remember, but we may have found other use for the general fund 6,000. I can't remember, but I just don't remember 6,000 being in that line item recently, but I, I can check. I just haven't looked specifically Last one I printed was this one you sent out in January, so you may have. Okay, new. I'll look at, I'll see what, okay. it, what that line item still looks like. Okay. That was all the old business. Um, since you was talking about the um, potholes, I'm sure this wouldn't take any money hardly out. Scott, this is maybe mainly for you. Um, sure. I think I mentioned this to the previous city manager, and I'm not sure if it went along to you or not. In front of 892 High Street, it's really narrow, and on the right side there's a pothole but on the left side it looks like the road is actually like slipping away so you can't avoid the pothole or your car might slip away and you can't avoid the slip without hitting the big pothole so i was wondering if maybe someone could look into that um how recently have you been up there because our guys went up there and did a pretty big patch a couple weeks ago uh, i seen the patch um, okay. So what about the slip though on the left side? I haven't seen it with my own eyes, so I'll have to go look at it. it. Looks actually like it maybe could have been like water running off. It's about like a five, six, eight inch, almost like a circle. Like if your tire went off, it might catch in it. But yeah, okay. if you could please. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, and I have been asked to ask this question and find out, do you know if we have a contract with the TV cable to pay a fee to the city as, to operate as a sole carrier? Um, I don't think we pay anything for the TV cable here. We don't pay them. No, no, no. For them to pay us to operate as a sole carrier. But they're not a sole carrier. <clears throat> My understanding what? is no. Uh, okay. I don't like a franchise fee. I think they don't. They're not, they're, but they're not the only provider for internet or cable. Right. I mean, you have a range. Of, you've got. Okay. Uh, they, I was just going to say they have a range of like regulatory fees they pay to different entities. I don't think that's one of them, but I'm, yes, I have to remind right. myself I've only been here five months. So. So maybe I, I had absolutely no idea. Yeah, he doesn't so. charge it. It's an no, exclusive no. fee. But they don't charge us for cable, cable or internet. Yeah. 
Okay. They well, they even they uh, the one thing that we do get charged for. My understanding, they give us a very good discount on um, operating cameras down at the pool. Uh, we don't and we don't pay full rate for the internet down there, so we're pretty thankful for that. And that was all I had. Whatever you guys have, and Taylor has. Well, due to Taylor's report there and, and less income, I think we need to be very careful of everything. <laughs> well, I mean, what we, what we spend for even street paving because we're not getting the gas tax we thought we were. Okay. Uh, you know, income tax is going to be down. Okay. So I, I think maybe we need to look at after July and see where we're at with the income tax and the gas tax. And, you know, because I'm sure, you know, the states have said that they're cutting back on everything. So that means us too. So just think we need to be cautious of that and maybe not make any decisions until July. I mean, some of the little stuff, yeah. Yeah, no, made, no major projects. Or yeah, as far as paving streets or anything like that. I mean, it's great to pay the street, you know, a couple of streets a year, but with this COVID-19, I think we need to kind of watch our P's and Q's a little bit. Yeah, I think we need to be pretty, you know, watchful over it. Um, the other question that Wanda had uh, asked me to ask before she left was like in case of, you know, we get into a situation where we're in financial emergency because we're not collecting in as much income tax or what have you, or people aren't, you know, filing until it's been extended July, think, 15. July 15. So, yeah, so, um, you know, she was, she had mentioned to me, like, do we have, things in place where we're going to be watchful of you know i mean if we need to lay off you know temporarily or do we you know do we have control over overtime things of that nature or, or is it going to be approved for like emergency only type things you know so we're not getting ourselves into a, a situation because i'm sorry i read ahead on your report too but already but you know basically you're saying that current you know uh um you know, income that we've been receiving is about the same or flat or a little bit lower than last year. And then, but our expenses have been pretty much the same, if not, or not a little bit higher than yep. last year. So, um, so I, I, I think, so I think she even wanted to share that concern. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I want to just echo that. And, um, yeah, we, I think in my opinion, uh, there's been a lot of areas where folks have done really great. Uh, I mentioned on second page, the employees have been, especially the department heads, have been super cooperative and have come up with great ideas on cutting down uh, purchasing and justifying purchases. Uh, we've had a budget meeting with everybody uh, uh, during this pandemic. I think the problem is just going to be um, the longer it goes on, the more gravity the problem has, right? So if you if you lose your income at home for a month, you cut down on eating out. But if you lose your income for a year, I mean, you have an existential problem, right? So I think, like uh, Dan said, it's going to be June, May, June, July. We're really going to know, okay, how much of a issue do we have here? Um, I mean, I guess you guys are fortunate as a council. You can come up with both sides of the equation. Can we find revenues? Can we find expenses? Um, but, so yeah. If I can Sorry, jump Scott. in there a little bit. So we, we're looking for all sorts of savings. Um, I'll just share with you a couple of the crazy ones that we spent money on in the past. We've been paying to have letterhead printed for us. And then we take a Word document and try to size it up and do practice runs to get it on there. You can do letterhead on a Word document. So we're not paying for that anymore. That's done. Um, we're paying ten over $10,000 a year for copying machines. Um, I refuse to pay the invoice until they negotiate with us how to re reduce down. They keep giving uh, COVID as an excuse not to talk. That's fine. I've made it very clear that we're not going to pay until we're able to renegotiate and get that from five copiers, to printer, scanner things down to one. You know, in addition to that $10,000 for the copying machine, you go look around and there's a copier printer on everybody's desk, you know, so there's significant savings in different areas you know as 
just on the administrative side of the house that we've already implemented to take away from that. And, you know, the, the grass mowing thing, you know, we only had $10,000. I, I don't know a contractor out there that would have mowed what we wanted them to mow for 10 grand. So, you know, by doing that in-house, you know, we're saving more money that way as well. So I think we were paying up to $16,000 at one point just for polyfield and uh, Crabtree, if, I, if, if memory serves me correctly. So we are looking holistically at everything that we can cut back on. We're also in the process of selling everything we can now as well, the old stuff to get rid of it, to try and bring more money in. So yeah. there's been- lots and lots of stuff here so it's not all gloom and doom a lot of it is gloom and doom but we do have a lot of things so next year you know the 911 bill that we pay the $48,000 there's no reason to pay that next year there's not we shouldn't have been paying it for years but we have been that's a different discussion um so that's money for next year that we can't undo you know just that kind of stuff that we're you know knocking the dust off shaking cages and figuring out what we can and can't get rid of yeah, I should have. I'm glad Scott countered my pessimism because he's right. So each day when we got water bills a couple weeks ago, the big the big customers, which I don't mind saying, Hocking College, the school district, Rocky, um, I made sure to take down numbers from, uh, I think for Hocking College, we went through um, November, if I remember, Scott, and I showed him the differences. And the biggest difference, which was a huge difference, was the dorms uh, in, in their bill versus like what we're getting from there. And so um, he's right. Like we're working daily. We're both pretty aware that it's like if we do nothing, it's going to cause just huge problems down the road. Um, one of the the big the biggest proposal in what we have tonight uh, complement each other. So the savings from my office helps something that Scott's need Scott needs. Um, so yeah, I mean he's right. In a more optimistic view, we're moving as quickly as possible. We're playing. I don't think Scott would mind me saying we would like to play hardball with some of the folks at the state who take a ton of money from sure. localities. Like, uh, and we're just saying, look, if people can't pay their mortgages and can't go to work, we can't afford to pay this this year. Um, and doing our best to see how what we can get away with. The worst people can say is no. Um, so yeah, I'm glad he countered my pessimism there because there, there are a lot of issues, but we also are acting as much every day as possible to- Yeah, and, to and just one more, not to belabor the point too much, but I do want to belabor the point. So back to the grass mowing thing, and I don't really think anybody has a problem with it, but if they did, I've been through many, many furloughs where contractors are still working and government employees are at home being laid off. I would not be able to stomach the fact that if our employees were to get laid off, which I will say the same thing I've told them, we will do absolutely everything to avoid that. However, if it should happen, I wouldn't be able, I would hate it for a contractor to be out mowing the grass when that's something that we could be doing, you know, and, uh, and, and they're at home. So just a little bit of background of, you know, how I think about things and um, which way we're going with that and more savings to come. We just keep digging for more and more savings. Again, the, the employee action form we were paying for three carbon copies to be all together in one. Becky put it together in a Word document in approximately less than four minutes. And now we no longer have to buy those. So just so many things that we we're paying for that there's just absolutely no need to keep paying for. Yeah, we saved like $1,200 printing all the income tax letters that went into everyone. We printed them here instead of at a private business. And I'm sure they would have loved our business, but it is a big savings for us. So. Well, yeah, I mean, that was just crazy. Not having to be on a, I got letterhead on my word for a couple of days. Like, plus the time it takes to go freaking trying to arrange that and put it on the printer, copier, all crap is upside down. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I haven't seen any page. Oh, I was going to say, I have the answer to your question from email. I don't know if you want to write down these numbers from for debt payments. Oh, you don't have a print like. I can pr- I can email you a copy. That would be easier than me because okay. I don't write well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll send it to to everybody. She just asked for a summary of total debt payments, including leases for car, for vehicles or what car payments, whatever. Um, pretty substantial. 
Well, so I'm thinking. sure you'll be interested to see it. <laughs> continue to get loans and say, oh, we'll get a loan, we'll get a loan. We don't stop and think, we already have 20 loans. What's going to happen yeah. when we get 26 or 27? I'm we'll get one loan to pay for those 26. <laughs> We have, uh, just to go through it real quick, uh, street debt payments. These are things like Jefferson Street, which is just the worst, and we still have a 30-year loan for it anyway. Um, $30,000 for street uh, payments each year. Capital improvement, this is including um, leases, sewer back truck, police, uh, fire, all that stuff. 93000 a year. Um, water debt payments is the biggie, 352000 a year. That's humongous. Sewer debt payments at 130, but after the sewer plant project's done, we're talking. We don't know for sure where it'll end because we're still maneuvering for grants instead of loans on a few things. Um, and when I say we, that's really the city manager and Stan Tech, but um, it could be anywhere from 250,000 more to 300,000 more, putting it around 400 grand a year. So we have a pretty good chunk of debt payments each year. When I looked on the OPWC, which is just one of the state agencies that loans to cities, I looked at every county, city, and village on Route 33 plus Marietta. So that includes Lancaster, Athens, Logan, Hocking County, Athens County, Fairfield County. Uh, I looked at Star Township just because it's in the middle of nowhere out in Hocking County, York Township, everywhere, Marietta, Nelsonville had the highest OPWC loan amounts out of any of those places. So we do have that's a, what I'm afraid of. We're just going to keep getting a loan for this and a loan for that. And I was really surprised. I would have thought the counties would have had more than us, but we have more than us. have our revenue company. True, true. What was your question, Dan? Oh, so have we seen a difference now that doctors, hospitals online with water and sewer? Um, up on the hill? Yeah. I don't know about water and sewer. There's been a big difference. Uh, I think I'm allowed to say there's been a big difference in income tax. Mm -hmm. It's probably nowhere close to the hospital, but it's better than zero. Right. Um, or we was just offline what, a couple months ago, right? So, I mean, we were getting no income tax. Right. So it's definitely much higher than zero. Um, I don't, I never thought to look at water and sewer. So and I don't know when. I do know that the, the prison did bid out. Because we were second bidder on that one, uh, so I don't know when it's going to start. The that's prison of, back online. Uh, so. Hawking Correctional Facility. Mm -hmm. That's Hawking County, though. We get the water and sewer from. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. But if there's any work done up there, we wouldn't get any income tax for it. No, but that's not what I'm talking. About. I'm talking, you know, so it would be coming back online soon. Now we're not going to get nowhere near what we were getting because, for one, they had the old men's troughs up there. Right. And those things just ran 24-7, and the state just paid the bill. So this is going to be turned into uh, more of a women's to where, you know, girls like to sit down. We have to. That's <laughs> what we like to. <laughs> uh, so we'll be considerably less, but at least it'll come back online soon. Good. So, do you want me to get okay? Start on your first that way, we don't keep you long. I can try if I'm if I speed through it too fast. Just let me know because um, I just know there's a lot, and I don't want everybody to zone out if they haven't uh, yet at home already. So, the first one is the city needs to appropriate Wood Lane Drive Slip Project twenty five thousand. It's a hundred percent grant. I just have to be able to re be able to write the check. Council has to authorize the appropriation, and then we get reimbursed. How long does the reimbursement take? <clears throat> well, they usually don't take long at all. We have a whole litany of reimbursements. I want to say nine or ten, adding up to like six figures. I can tell you that that were lost in the final days of prior city manager, and that Scott has been working really hard to get totally. I think. If Scott can correct me if I'm wrong, totally filed. We're just waiting for the check. But when it's, when it's done correctly, it can take us like a week or two. So good. Um, yeah, the biggest you... one is our OM, OMEA rep, and he's working from, uh, he's still in the office right now because that's a big one for getting these reimbursements. And uh, it, it's just a, a matter of us getting to them what they need. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, it's really just an email. I don't know why so many were dropped, but yeah. Um, thank you for, both for doing that, by the way. That's great. Do you guys want to approve them one by one, or just as a just let me keep going? I'm okay. Or? I moved to approve that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. We still have to. We'll get it. Where you said, Dan, you were already out there. Right. That's right. So Riverside Drive Slip is nearly the same. I actually, I put 155. I crossed it out and wrote 160, but it's almost completely reimbursed by FEMA as well. Uh, this is actually, Riverside Drive Slip is done. Uh, we just have an invoice outstanding because it's one of the ones I just mentioned. So we have an invoice from Shelly and Sands. It's like four months old or something for a hundred some thousand. And they, yeah, we really, they really want their money. Is that that we already appropriated the 155 or we have to? No, you would need to. And then that is almost completely reimbursed. So once we outlay that check, a check will come back from Do FEMA. we have that much to uh, lay out? <laughs> well, the bank account, yes. In the line item, no. The line item only has like, that's what I, I want to say 20000 That's why we're appropriating out of the unappropriated balance. Okay. And then it should be. so. When, and and that will come back here. Yeah, and what this means when I say grant on my end, just if it's helpful, when I report this to the county, which is required by law, when you guys approve appropriations, I report the expected income from it too. Right. So nobody at the county will look at these numbers in the middle of the pandemic and say, what the heck's Nelson will do? Yeah, why are they spending $185,000? Right. Yeah. Because they'll, they, they see that there's expected reimbursement shortly after. Okay. Uh, church street, street repair. I'll toss this a little bit to Scott. I don't know if this job has got final approval, but we have an invoice from them for a few thousand dollars. So it's it's actually uh, moving along. They went out there and drilled the core sample, so now they're doing the engineering piece on it. And as soon as the engineering piece is approved by FEMA, then they'll go up there and get the repair done. Okay. So basically, we have to outlay for those invoices, same exact thing, and then we get an, a reimbursement for what would be 87.5% of it back, leaving us to pay 27 or 12.5 as a city match. So if you guys appropriate that, we get that back. I know for sure that Church Street will require a lot more than this, but I don't know how much. Okay. I don't so, know if Scott knows, but. So that was no my question. Idea. So is, is the 5,000, is that our 12.5%? No, so that's just an invoice I have on, on my desk. That I can't pay because there's we didn't we didn't know we didn't put anything in Church Street when Council approved it back in December. Um, Is that just engineering costs right now? Yeah, for testing. Yeah, and then basically we'll write that check and a check for eighty seven point five percent of it will come back to us. Um, but like I said, Church Street this whole process of pass through for this um, it could it's probably gonna be a lot more than that. I mean. Well, it's probably, I don't know, Scott, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar project. But the At thing least. is though, we're not gonna get our if we we write that check now though, we're not gonna get our um eighty seven percent back until the project's completed and we file for reimbursement, correct? Or will well, we, we can do it as it goes. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. If we do it that way, I'm okay with that. Yep. If we're gonna Yeah, they reimburse us every time we pay. Okay, so I'll lay it now, though, and if we're not going to get, you know, have the opportunity to do it till the very end, which it could be what six months or so from now, I don't want to necessarily, you know, be eaten up. up. So, correct me if I'm wrong. So, basically, we're going to give a check for five grand. That invoice be paid. We'll get eighty-seven percent of that back. Yep. And then let's say we got a bill coming in two months from now for twenty grand. We'll pay that. We'll have eighty-seven percent of that come back. Yep. Correct. Exactly. Perfect. I just I would. Uh, normally, to save everybody work, I would say this is how much we need for Church Street total. Right. But I mean, I think Michael Betts has an estimate, but I don't even know. Well, probably I don't see, if this is part of the engineering, once that's completed, I'm sure we'll have a much more firm yeah. number. Yeah, yeah, if they just do core samples, they got to yeah. test the density of the ground. I'm okay with that. I'm Carl, I guess that means it doesn't matter what you say. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and these are all capitals, capital improvements so far. So these are going to be a lot of our pass through funds and capital improvements. I should have said that earlier. Um, also in capital improvement, I have an invoice for a boat motor. Uh, typically, this is on our emergency boat, which we just used recently because the uh, police department chased a guy. 
he jumped in the river. We had to go get him, and it was a crazy day for them, I'm sure. Wow. But, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Scott knows more the details than me. I just remember Meek saying that he chased a guy in a river the other day. Um, so his motor got used. Normally, and I'll take some partial responsibility, normally when we approve POs, we are very certain uh, that the money's there. This purchase order got approved for a line item that had run out of money, so this is partially my fault. Um, so I was asking for $5,000 from capital to pay for it um, out of the fire department equipment line item. Um, so is the motor $5,000? And the motor, what, did it just up or what? Or? There, so there, they changed it out for the mower. The, so the boat they got was free and from Athens. And I don't believe the motor came on it. I think it was something that they had around. But it wasn't powerful enough to push them up any water with any current whatsoever with all the weight in there and yes boat motors are unbelievably expensive they cost more than the boat often i, know I don't so. mind getting it sometime i don't know if this would be the perfect time i mean what do you guys think i, mean, I guess the problem the, the spending you know i guess the problem i mean so part of part part problem is we already got it. So when we made the purchase. Oh, okay. I didn't understand you already. Yes, yeah, usually. So in the past, this was normal practice under uh, the new team here. We've tried to make sure you're not purchasing till it's approved. We're going right. to make sure the money's there. This was a partial mistake. It was approved for a line item that had run out of money. Um, so this is partially a team uh, effort at yep. doing that. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do hey, you're not alone, buddy. I was in on that mess as well. Or, well, not mistake as well. I'm not deflecting blame. And it's a, it's a team, team mistake. So one thing council could decide to do instead is to find somewhere else to take it from. Like, in other words, lower line item to pay for this one. But at some point, we do have to. So are we going to be sure that we don't purchase things again without having enough money or approval or whatever's supposed to be done? Yes. And in our defense, in our defense, right, Scott, if, correct me if I'm wrong, that line item only ran out of money because an invoice got unpaid from before my term started. Correct. It got paid, this was 2019, and then it got paid out of this year's budget. That department head didn't realize that had got paid. And so is yeah. it, when I say team fail, I mean like multiple terms, like multiple people yeah. team fail yeah. on this one. Um, no, I'm okay with that. I think I think honestly between you and and Scott, I mean, I think you're you're managing and this stuff uh, much better and much more transparent than it's ever been. So I'm I'm comfortable with uh, allowing you to you know do that. You're you're also finding ways to save money and and finding money that we should have had before. So I, I'm I'm comfortable with it. And and just to share, and Taylor hasn't shared this. We it seems like at least once or twice a week. We get a new bill from years ago. Yep. And we got one too. And then and then trying to research it and figure out who authorized it and what the work was. Uh, it's very time consuming and not complaining, but it's just a lot of those skeletons are coming out. Uh Make sure a legitimate bill before we pay. Yes. <laughs> well, we got one today and, and they were it's some contractor in Dorian, I want to say, or some name from Ohio. I didn't remember. But based in my email, they called Scott's number. Just like and then in my email, they wrote third and final attempt to collect. And I was like, who are these people? And it's a real, I mean, it's 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 six hundred dollars, but it just never got paid last year. And I don't know how to explain it. What was it for? Uh water pumps, I believe. Water pump repair. We haven't mm -hmm. figured out exactly yeah. the history on that one. Yeah, well, and I told her, I, she said, you know, how quick can you guys turn this around? Because, like, we've been, con she said she'd been contacting Brenda. I said, well, Brenda worked here in two years. And so, you know, we talked with, or we're going to talk with Jeff Trawl, and we're going to make sure it's all legitimate. I'm sure it is. And, uh, you know, I told her, I said, this is from a past fiscal year. You can't just, like, drop a check from 2019 and yeah. get it paid. you got to go through the whole process again. And so I, I'm not down on anybody. I just, like he said, we do. We get invoices from a while ago. Yep. The ghosts. Which is a good segue. If you guys are okay with that, are you guys okay with this one? I'm fine with that. So, which is a great segue into number five uh, income tax refunds. You guys appropriate $5,000 for refunds every year for people who pay too much or, or 
we have people who don't even live in town who accidentally paid through their employer, different things like that. Um, and we verify it with their W-2s and everything. I have three or four tax returns <laughs> from folks who were owed refunds last year and didn't get it. Uh, one is a business. Um, I have a family who does not live in town, who talked personally with the prior tax administrator, who shall remain nameless, who they specifically were told by her three times. I confirmed with their accountant, in fact. They were told three years in a row that they had to pay city income tax because they lived in city limits. So they got a lawyer and a whoever that they need to confirm they don't live in city limits, so they're owed a refund. So this is a great example from Scott. Thank you, Scott, for saying that. We need a little bit more money to process refunds from past year skeletons. <laughs> because these people are owed money and we don't uh, have a right to it, unfortunately. So this is an additional? Yes. 2000? So, yeah, so I think it adds, uh, I mean, it could be more, right? Because tax day is July 15th. Yeah. But I think it'll be around 2500 and uh, there's already 5000 appropriated. So it should okay. cover it. I mean, if we all will. Yeah. Yeah. One of them's a business. We own twelve hundred dollars. They're supposed to get it last year. Like, I totally feel for them. I feel like people deserve their money. You know. I I have a, a an example of that. I was uh, I and it wasn't very much money because I don't they don't owe me very much. But it took me three years to get. She finally paid me for three years that they owed me. Really? Yeah. Last the last in two thousand nineteen. She's gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's like a bad news one there, but the next one is just increased appropriations for bond coverage since we passed, or you guys passed uh, bonds for the auditor's positions. Um, so to pay for those. And those come out of these, these accounts? Yeah, those are those line items. Uh, the auditor's bond, the auditor's office bond coverage is split with the rest of the expenses. Um, Unless you guys had a different suggestion. Did we go, we went with 120? We went with 20, 20, and 100. Yep. 120 and 100. Yep. This should be more. This was just in case, I don't, I didn't know if, I don't really know how bonds are priced. I mean, I know it's a percentage, but I know it's worse if your credit's worse. And yeah, yeah, so yeah, I just did more than we would need. I think, I don't think we'll need more than maybe 2,000 for all. How bondable you are you are? Yeah. Uh, how many bonds you do get wrote, uh, which we need to collect on some of those past bonds. I agree. Are you guys okay with that one? Or? I'm okay with it. Okay. Usually well, most of these... By the way, not to go back, but on your number five, I understand what you're saying, bad news, but I feel like it's actually good news because I feel like we're, we're setting the ship right. Uh -huh. yeah, we're, doing, it's, we're doing the right thing. Uh, so I don't I don't look at it as being a negative. I feel like we're yeah. I just feel I feel really bad for some of them. There's one in the business that much. Yeah, that's, there's that's one a in good thing too. yeah. And I guess you're right. These could just be the ones I know. But there's one individual who works in Athens and she lives in Gloucester, and her employer's been withholding Nelsonville income tax for three years. I don't know why she hasn't asked them to stop, but it's not really that's not really my business right my business is we owe her that money and so she filed three returns saying i've done this three years in a row or now three years could you guys please stop or at least send my money back and i mean by law we owe her her money back she doesn't live or work here and it was verified um i mean it wasn't a, it's not going to break the bank but a thousand dollars you know we got to send it back right. could be huge for her you know yeah really uh Number seven, Scott, I don't know if you have a paper back there, but number seven is about your proposal. I don't know if you want to jump in first or if you want me to explain mine first or. It, it doesn't matter. I don't have your paper back here. So what what I've been talking to you guys um, in the past for was the uh, supervisor position over top of the water boys the street department. And then ultimately, I think it could work for the water department as well. Um, it's proven in such a short amount of time with supervisor overhead um, how much more work can be accomplished when somebody else is prioritizing it for them. Uh, also, you know, currently overtime is an issue. Uh, I haven't changed that process yet, 
until I know what the outcome is going to be, you know, for my position because I, and or if there's a supervisor that's put into that position. So what I would like to propose is, you know, hire internal and promote one of our folks uh, within the city up to supervisory position, which uh, Taylor and I were doing the math and it would be roughly 25,000 ish more. Taylor, does that sound about right if I recall our numbers? Yeah, oh, you have a 15, never mind, and 5,000 from the uh, medical, so 20. And what that does is allows them oversight. So, just as an example of how important uh, this position can be, uh, right now, if somebody calls in to get their water turned on and it goes to the water office, they take that call and put in a work order. Well, they get a hold of the water boys out doing work and tell them to go turn the water on that day. So what happened the other day was they were on multiple leaks. And then when they got that, it actually ended up generating overtime for them to go turn a water system on. When we actually had other employees that we could have had accomplished the same work and not generated any overtime at all. So I'm a attempting to fill that role best I can. Specifically, I'm there at 7 a.m. every morning to uh, distribute work and uh, talk, walk through it with those folks. And then for the most part, they're on their own. They call throughout the day for issues. However, direct supervision could definitely get a lot more uh, tasks completed and provide oversight for those folks. And I truly believe a lot of overtime could be eliminated by having somebody in that process. Another issue with that is if they call the call out person now, that would be you know one of the two uh, heads, which they're just a team lead, they're not a supervisor. And those folks are making determinations whether or not to work overtime or not. And therefore, if they make a bad call, it falls onto them and there's no top cover. And there's nobody there to make that decision for them to avoid that sort of uh, issue. Hence the tree back in January. So I, I feel very, very strongly that a supervisor would add a tremendous amount of utility and also capability to our existing resources. And uh, I do believe giving up one of our current positions, you know, to promote internally is best way for the city to move forward. So Scott, I have a question for you. So you still have the same amount of people. So like you're turning that water on and the water guy saying they had to go work overtime, and you're saying that somebody else could have went and done it. You still have the same amount of people. What would be so different there? Correct. Why so so instead of the water office sending that to the team lead of the water department or the water boys who are out working on a break, send that to the supervisor who would be a working supervisor who could do it. But also we have folks that are working. So for example, uh, I restructured the hours of the water plant. So now instead of four tens, they now work five eights. So that person is down here helping the street department mow grass. Also, we have experience in the street department I wish they have worked in the water department in the past. If the supervisor would have received that request, they could have very easily utilized one of those other resources that has the experience to go shut that off. Okay. Scott, can I, can I ask you, and I guess maybe I've been running under an assumption, or maybe I'm just confusing myself now. Is this position, you're adding a position or you're going to just keep the same staffing level and in, in, in create one of them as a supervisor? I believe we can promote within and not increase our numbers, but increase uh, capacity. Okay, so when we talked, well, because about it's not to interrupt. I'm sorry. Yeah. So what we're saying, though, by if if you promote somebody within and you have somebody overseeing those departments on on a daily basis, that also frees up your time to be working on other projects within the city. If I'm understanding correctly, because right now you're a tech supervisor for those departments while operating a city as a whole and so if you have you know a direct supervisor now it it creates that chain of command where it takes time off your plate that you can be focused on other things correct because right now i directly supervise 14 people okay so and i and i guess i misunderstood when we were meeting on these numbers earlier scott i thought it was adding a position. So if somebody, if the number of positions is the same, 
and somebody will just get a, a supervisory position with a few dollars an hour increase. I mean, that would only be a few thousand a year. I don't, I don't actually know whether the request for appropriation would even be necessary. So that might have been my misunderstanding of your plan earlier. Well, no, the request for appropriation probably would because you'd be you'd be taking an individual making X amount of dollars, moving them to this position, and increasing that wage. Yeah, but he's what I'm saying is, is it's not twenty grand. He created a whole new position. Oh, yeah, I thought we were creating a position. If I'm being honest, I think you made a position, yes, sir. <laughs> We're, we're technically, we're replacing a position that was already there, and right. when that person vacated that position, we never replaced right. that person. So, so I mean, even if it was four or five dollars an hour increase for that person, I mean, we'd be talking about a few thousand. Which, as we talked about earlier, Scott, the water and sewer distribution budget could handle. Um, I forget what number we said. It was eleven or twelve thousand. So I don't actually know. I don't actually know if this would be necessary. I mean, maybe we could come back if we needed appropriations, but I'm not sure. I, I was budgeting for increasing of, of the staffing position. Well, my opinion is I, I'm forward if, if, if it is required, because I think that good leadership, you know, provides results. And if, if it allows Scott to be working on, you know, other things in the city and you have a direct supervisor that's capable no different than Tommy Maiden was, you know, because he was a working uh, leader as well and did a, a great job. And, you know, if you get a good person in that role, that leadership, you know, if there's a difference in pay, it, it pays, it will pay for itself because you will, yeah. you, you, you'll get more work done with the same amount of staffing. And so I'm, I'm supportive of it if whatever it requires, if it requires an appropriation or not. So I think well, we and to add, if I may. So there's a lot more to it than just adding a supervisor. You know, just like I was mentioning the uh, letterhead, you know, we do things very archaic here. And, uh, you know, so the mistake that we made with the boat motor, right? So there's there's a million different softwares. We already have one. But if we had a software system that we ran all POs through that were tied to funding lines, also work orders, you know, it, I've been told Athens has this. I don't know if they have it or not. But what I envision is, you know, Probably goes and sees that pothole on High Street. She takes a picture of it and, uh, you know, emails it into the city that automatically generates a work order and goes straight to the supervisor for them to prioritize. So when they have enough potholes, they do a pothole day. And then when they're done, they take a picture of it to show it's been done. Carla gets an email back. It says your pothole has been repaired. But also behind the scenes, we can assign resources to us. So we can really start figuring out how, how much things cost, you know, what's the man hour cost, equipment cost, also fleet management. We don't manage our fleet at all. It's just kind of a wag for everything on the budget, you know, so uh, when are, when's equipment going to need service or major service? We don't have anything like that. We're just very reactive. Other than the fire department, they have their own fire software that does a lot of that for them. But the rest of us, when it breaks, we take it to the repairman. You know, so we don't project ahead, you know, lifespan, at least that I can tell when stuff's going to break, which my understanding that would be significant for you folks when doing the budget and planning ahead to know that next year our Ford truck is going to need a new transmission because at 150,000 miles, Ford falls apart. You know, I don't know. I'm just making that up. But I would like to get software that gets us to that level of predictive analytics and that supervisor running the team a lot more effectively instead of doing a pothole for a half a day and mowing grass for another half a day. Well, I do know that we have like service contracts for the street sleeper. And I thought that that was a, a good thing because just work that little bit of money to make sure something that expensive gets serviced. Because if you keep servicing the vehicle like that, it'll last a hell of a lot longer. So I think we can agree. And we don't have that for the back truck. Well, we we should have a service, some type of service schedule for all city vehicles. Absolutely agree with you. We're not doing fleet management correctly at all. So I just I just want to make sure, Scott. So once you once you hire somebody for this position, you don't you're not going to hire another body, right? Correct. No. I don't think it's necessary right now. I think that with the crew that we have and the team that we have, a little bit of supervision. I think they could rock it all day long, um, especially with moving some uh, other uh, shifts around. 
and getting the most out of there's a lot more bang for our buck out there. So that's really good news then. So I don't, in my opinion, I don't think the appropriation is necessary because the water sewer distribution budget has some uh, slack in it. It's one of the better performing ones this year. So if you guys wanted to discuss allowing Scott to make that move, you, you don't need to discuss whether there's money for it because there is. So we just have to do like we did when Stephanie got that raise. We have to do an order, oh, yes. right? Yeah, you'll have to change the staff. So agreements. why don't you go ahead and put the work, I mean, if everybody's agreed, put the ordinance, <laughs> put the ordinance through. Sometimes I just get ahead of myself. Got it. Put the ordinance through and, and just, you know, that way it give you time to recalculate the numbers from 20,000 to whatever you know, it is, five, five grand or, you know. Yeah. Would yeah, that would just say how much an hour or something like it did when we did Stephanie's, or would it be different? You know, that's how it would be. So you'd have to change the staffing ordinance and say this position is now called this position right. at this pay rate with these benefits. And authorize them to see probably the hourly though, right? Or 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 or, uh, well, it'd be whatever you guys end up setting it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's got a few to lock them in the salary. That's free weekend. It that's could be salary. Is, might as well. Yeah. So. Um, wow, that's a good, that's good news. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, so we didn't say we were okay with it. We're just, oh, sorry. Did I? <laughs> oh, oh, man. I'm fine with it. I think mean, it doesn't matter what Dan thinks. So. <laughs> it does. That is what everybody thinks. So for my office, so I've been wanting to propose this for, since the round when the pandemic started, um, but I'm glad we didn't get to it too quickly because it has changed and I think got for the better. So I just wanted to say that the big picture is I'd like to rechange or I'd like to change the staffing ordinance in the auditor's office for several reasons. One is to be very clear for everybody listening here in the room and out in the public and for posterity, <laughs> I want the auditor's office to be safer and more transparent from this point going forward. Unfortunately, we've now had multiple thefts in the Nelsonville Auditor's Office um, or alleged thefts. And I want that to be to a minimum or never again. And so I vote for never again. <laughs> never again, right. <laughs> and so um, one thing I want to do, uh, and this could all be done easily in an ordinance. I just broke it down more, complica more complex so you guys could see what I was getting at. Um, one is I want to remove payroll from the staffing ordinance for the deputy auditor and income tax position. That position currently is three combined, which was part of the problem. Um, and then I put in parentheses that that payroll is still to be uh, worked out with another firm uh, once they're ready to take over, which uh, learning experience is taking way longer than I ever expected. <laughs> I don't know if it's just the pandemic, but now I know in the future that this kind of thing takes a while. Um, so that position would be just deputy auditor and income tax, which would basically be uh, for anyone who was around several years ago when Brenda was here, uh, when Brenda was deputy auditor, that position just did accounts payable, which is to say invoices came in, they marked the books for the invoices, got them approved by myself or the auditor, the city manager, and then made the checks to be signed and sent. So basically making sure this all the city's bills are paid on time. It's more complex than it sounds. We have like 112 electric bills. So like there's a lot of paperwork. Uh, and the income tax position combined, um, is it ideal? Could Nelsonville benefit from, you know, full-time everything probably, but we let's be realistic. We can't have full-time everything at a city our size. Uh, so getting rid of payroll, uh, Robert and Judy's positions are called account clerks uh, in the staffing ordinance. I would actually like to change one of those to part-time. Um, and that person would help with water and sewer billing and collections. And then in synergy, I use the word in synergy with the city manager, we came up with this plan to where we have this huge problem. I don't know if it's just the amount of issues going on in town. I don't know if it's because everyone's at home or it was really before the pandemic. We have a massive phone call problem. Ask any citizen in town, their phone calls get missed all the time. And it's not because we're, I swear to it, everybody listening at home, it's not because anyone's lazing around. It's because we're already on the phone with another person and you're getting forwarded to voicemail. 
when it's constantly every five minutes ringing, 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 and it makes it so hard to get work done. So what we thought was this person could answer the main line for the city and we would direct more of the phone numbers to the main line. And then that person would then divvy it out to the department saying, here's a non-emergency police uh, message. I'm going to transfer you now. Here's the city manager. Here's the auditor, whatever it may be. Um, so part-time position would be paid at entry level pay according to the contract and also follow benefits provision in the contract, which is uh, they could buy them, but it would be a full out of pocket cost. The city subsidizes full-time benefits pay for reference. Um, so making these changes would save the city over $25,000 in wages, over $30,000 in benefits, which is 55,000 in savings before we get to the alleged theft scheme. So <laughs> in my opinion, uh, this plan, I think Scott's in agreement. Uh, it helps both of our offices. It's both of us working together. It saves us money and it makes us a lot safer. And it, the, the bonding is part of this. It's just, we got the bonding done sooner because we delayed this as we continue to work on it. But bonding all the employees also protects the taxpayer against potential future thefts. And I think that's the end of my quick spiel. Well, so, okay. Oh, good. Just Everybody the perception has for the uh, folks calling in, you know, that if people get really frustrated because nobody answers their call. And oftentimes the, their question is very, very simple, you know, so, any more resources to help answer the call, I think would, uh, I think the community would appreciate it a lot. So, okay. with, so, so with the, you want to hire a part-time person to answer the phones and Taylor, I don't think that would need an ordinance, but I don't think you need an ordinance to change. This doesn't say hire someone, this says change. Well, he makes that clerk, those clerks are full-time position. Yeah, but his, so, so the people in his office. One yeah. of the yeah. two full time departments. Council controls those. You can't do that. It says no, in the charter they got to have two full time employees. No, we, I still would. Uh, the auditor had to come to city council to make the other full time other positions, like full time positions originally. And so if he wants it to go from full time to part time, he'd have to come through us again. We'd have to change it in. So that's, that's, that's the one thing we have control over. That don't make sense. I'll just put Judy there. I thought he handled his own staff. Yeah, the other guy that knows about I don't the have water. control over. No, um, technically, well, I don't have control of the money. One reason is for that as well. So you're right. I can just I I could today hire a deputy auditor and just not give them payroll responsibilities. I the ordinance would be, and I can do that if that's what council wants. Well, the ordinance would be just to make sure they're never payroll again, if that makes sense. Well, and it, no, taking it from full time to part time also though. And that yes, that on that position it will require an ordinance. Um, so the thinking is, I mean, yes, and I'll admit this in front of everyone. If I could just make one of my current employees deputy and still make it work, I would do it. I, I'm all for savings. We absorbed in my budget, we absorbed the most of the cost of the schemes, late fees and late penalties, late taxes, all that stuff. Almost all of it came out of my budget because I felt we're going to handle this because this is an auditor's office problem, even if it's not our fault, you know. I'm all for being a team player. The problem I'm running into in particular is income tax. I have got to get somebody who's more responsible for just that. And what I'm worried about with Judy being also water and sewer, Judy splits her time between accounts payable and water and sewer, if I say added income tax to her or to Robert, who's all water and sewer and is busy with it, it won't be any different than me doing it, which is kind of, <laughs> ask Scott, I was here like nine o'clock at night the other night entering in income tax returns into software for the first time because it hasn't been getting done. Mm. Um, you know, it, the kind of thing you guys have asked for for years, hey, how much did people pay in income taxes? It's really easy if the job is done. It's just never been done. And I don't mind saying that for, for the record at all. And so I guess what I'm saying is if I thought I could do it with what I got, I wouldn't ask you, but I, I'm concerned that I don't, I think that there are going to be parts of everyone's jobs where we're going to be getting less. Okay. Well, to it. go back, like, I don't know if it's a year and a half now, when Gail left, one of the whole reasons for hiring an administrative assistant that turned 
part-time code officer was to help answer the phones. And that so, was part of what the, it was called administrative assistant in the beginning, yeah. was to do before it went like 75%, 90% code enforcement. That was to help answer phones. And now we want to hire someone to help answer phones. Well, this would be a new position, well, I guess no it, offense. So do you want me to cut back on code enforcement then? I mean, that's kind of the position we're in. So, and I, and I want to stipulate too, this doesn't add a position. Actually, this ordinance on net would decrease by half a position, if that makes sense. Yeah. So in other words, when, exactly. I started, when I started this term, we had four full-time, basically, right. including myself. This would bring us to 3.5. And so I think we get more, if, if I'm not doubting anyone, I'm not saying anything, I think that in my seat in there, we're getting more done. So I don't think I need to add a whole person back in the deputy or, well, I don't have to add a whole fourth person back is what I'm saying. Um, so I've been saying issues about the phones for like two years that we need someone to answer phones. And I have always constantly got pushback on it. So why all of a sudden can we now try to get someone to answer phones? I'm not I've sure I lived in England then, but you had a really good idea back then. I don't know if it's just being sitting in the seat, but I can tell you that like, and I'm not messing around. <laughs> I should just leave my phone on on a recording one, oh, I one morning. It, rings all it the is time. That's why. constant, constant, constant. And I, well, all I can say is new leadership in town. So I mean, which wasn't then. With you know, I wasn't on. But I mean, there's so many things we're talking about now that I have mentioned, and it was always like you know pushback. Just like well, two years well, ago. Probably, but they also probably said they didn't have the money for it either. Two years ago, we had all the city guys mow, and they couldn't do it because they didn't have time. And now... Well, they got time. Uh, they just need management. Yes, I think it comes down to leadership. It comes down to leadership. They need leadership in departments so they can take you know direction and... Lack of leadership becomes chaos. It yes, does. I totally... And if it, I mean, if it was ever me who pushed back on it, I'll just admit that, like... Oh, no, it was it wasn't it, you. You wasn't. You wasn't? Was no. <laughs> well, well I, just mean, I just mean, if it was ever me, it could have just been misunderstanding. Because, honestly, I'd say within the first week of the term, I was like, this is insane. And this is no offense to any citizens or anything. Everybody deserves to have their question answered. It's constant. I mean, poor Scott and poor Scott. <laughs> Poor Scott's uh, supervising 14 people just to come to his defense directly, um, not in, including the super or the supervisors. And so we had that one day with like four main leaks across town, and he was scattering around town. And like his office is ringing, my office is ringing. And when our phones ring, they ring the other phones in the office, mine and his. So it's like the whole of City Hall is a Christmas tree of lighting up from the phone system. And we were trying to get, you know, our job done and water lines plugged all over City Hall, or I mean the city. And the only reason I'm telling you the story is to say that Scott and I just became like, okay, we've got to come up with a plan. And to me, the reason I really like this plan is is not not because if I got a fourth person it'd make or a full fourth position, it'd make my life easier. But what I like about this plan is, is it's our two offices working together instead of against each other, saying, How can we fill these holes? and save the city some money in a tough time. Well, if I'm not mistaken, though, if if Scott hires, if he moves a guy up from within, that frees him up now to take phone calls from citizens, which I think is more important than, you know, some of the things that he may be dealing with. I'm not saying those aren't important things that we need to get done in the city, but I'm saying customer oriented, right? We need to make sure that, the, that our constituents are taken care of. So if he frees up time, we, you know, Taylor moves positions around where he gets the assistance where he needs it. We bring on a new person at 30 hours a week here, it looks like, is what you're looking at. All of a sudden, people's phone calls are getting answered by an individual. Um, can this person help out with any administration help in the police department as well? Because I know we, we have administrative, you know. Chris has always pushed back on that because... Uh, well, that's not what I'm asking They have to have, I'm not sure. I forget what it's What's called, the they have to be like, certified in something. Yeah, yeah, I don't so. remember what it's called. I do, know that they, I do know that our thinking was that if the, the non-emergency, and I want to uh, 
say this loudly, not 911, obviously, a non-emergency police line would actually ring that phone first as well. And that person would then say, let me transfer you to line six, the police department or whatever it is. So yeah, there would be, a, there's probably somebody somewhere like who doesn't believe in government laughing, saying that's just redundancy, but just sit in here for a day. It's so constant. I think being transferred at least to the chief's voicemail and getting a person to talk to saying, hey, he's on a run, he'll be back in 20 minutes. It could make a huge difference, I think. Well, I'm just saying because I know, I mean, it's evident that the police department is, you know, I mean, have been making a lot more calls or reports, you know, and, and I mean, I know that's that's paperwork involved. Um, you know, even if it's even if it's just taking the stuff that they're they're doing on a daily basis and then putting it into Facebook, which they're doing, that doesn't require any you know skill level that would be only a police officer could do. You know, but you know, freeing up the time of an officer that's currently doing that. You know, I mean, what is I don't know. I mean, well, they got to do the reports anyhow, and, and now they have actually working laptops in their cars, so they can do all that. Were they not working before? Yeah, so I think it was. Other guy. Yeah, what was his name? We just did it like six months ago. Was, uh, when the lady quit. I thought that was incorrect. Problem to me. I was like, call the resident. So I don't know why I can't think of it. Chris is like, I'm going to call it. So I said, we're going to go to town. So I think case scenario. Would be a full time person to answer the phone, help out PD, and also help. I mean, that would be awesome if we could do that. One full time person to do that. I, what Taylor's trying to do is, minus the PD section, just increase the level of service to the public while helping him out with the uh, the income tax. Because I, if I understand correctly, that's his biggest rock that he's worried about over there. And you know, something else to throw in there. You know, the, the way he's doing payroll right now is also very time consuming. And I, I, this is just another shameless plug for technology. You know, a true blue timekeeping sense, uh, system, you know, there's a lot of them out there where folks would have to uh, sign in, here, you know, actually here in the building. And it would do all that stuff behind the scenes for them. Uh, Kronos is just a big off the shelf one that comes to mind. But uh, I, I do believe that that would also help with efficiencies down there in his department. But ultimately, one person to answer the phone all day long and be the face of somebody come in and just needed an application for a permit, you know, and handed that to them. I think it would pay dividends for the city. But I don't know that Taylor, or, you know, Taylor's going for the whole. I don't think he's going for the farm right now. Isn't that what Gail did before? Was the face of the city and answer the phones? That's all she did. Well, that's what I mean. Isn't that what she's yeah. saying? Someone to. I mean, two is full time. I mean, he's only doing like 30 hours with this position, so there's no benefits being paid. The big part, the big part for that's the big part that helps, well, helps all of us, but that's the big part Scott was definitely interested in. As far as inside my office, the part that helps is if I can get a person to deputy auditor and then have a person there to assist um, with water and sewer on that end. And I assume. See, water and sewer is irregular. So like uh, Thursday, there was, that's a kind of day where Robert is working more on water and sewer because he, we didn't need Robert and Judy working on it because no bills to process and nobody's paying it because it was due on the 10th. However, this week bills have to go out Friday. It's crazy, it's pandemonium. And because we've got a hundred tax returns coming a day, we've got our normal invoices and at some point, I'm supposed to return to an auditor's job with <laughs> like payroll and income tax. And it, 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 it doesn't seem crazy because we're all sitting at a desk. But like we all honestly can't even move to go to the bathroom sometimes because it's too much. And so uh, to me, if I can get somebody to take income tax and then somebody to assist Robert at the busy times, which is really like the last week of the month and the first week of the month, yeah. um, he'll obviously handle most of it. And the income tax is going to be all year long. Right. Right. It won't be like this year where it's six months. It'll be a condensed. Um, and there are withholdings to process through the year, but those are on the 15th of the month. And I just think that, that you know, we can make this position, these positions really smart and safer. It's really my main concern. Um, 
I, I guess I don't. I guess so, that's where. So you are. So basically, we're going to we're talking about hiring someone to replace our old deputy owner. Yep. Now, now that we're going to be farming out payroll, and Judy pretty much does the accounts payable. Yep. Does does that deputy owner need to be a full time position? Well, I think the deputy and income tax should, and that's what one reason why I say the the water clerk or water sewer clerk, one of them should be downgraded to part time. Um, I should say as cautiously as possible. I mean, I think it's perfectly possible to say who are assets in town in our city hall, who are the assets in my, you know, who can we hire to make that happen? I don't think we have to fall reach down to Athens or Logan. I think we've probably got it here, but I kind of be careful. You don't want to say, you know, it's already decided or anything, but I think it should if be full time. In and maybe give you a hand tailor. So there's a lot yeah. of stuff not getting done, Dan, that, uh, frankly needs to be done. So another shameless plug for technology, you know, all of our equipment and inventory should be audited. And I, I don't know when it was done last. I find equipment all the time and it's not on any record of anything that I've found yet. And that's all stuff that we need to remedy. So I, I think that reducing the resource from full-time, specifically that resource down to part-time it would it would cut us at the knees when it would, that by actually doing that and promoting that would give opportunity to get other things caught up and take care of stuff that we should have been doing for a long time. So what's what's going to be the duties of the deputy auditor then? That, so that person is going to be deputy auditor income tax, and so the deputy auditor is going to do accounts payable. So they're going to get invoices, process them to purchase orders, which Scott and I have to approve and then get those to checks and then income tax. I think that's a really good mix. I think the two of them with payroll was a really so good mix. So they're asking Judy's load. So what's Judy's duties going to be then? More water and sewer? Um, I can't see hiring one person full time to cut one person to half time. That doesn't make sense. I don't think they're exclusive. So in other words, if Judy well, I know was interested they have different duties. in the position, I think she'd be a good candidate. If that yeah, the deputy sense. auditor was full time before. Right. So in other words, our full time folks would be taken care of because we wouldn't put we wouldn't downgrade an employee. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you guys think I should have a fourth, I'm, I will find something for that person no, to do. I don't, I don't. But I guess what I'm saying is, by union, by by uh, contract and seniority, we're going to keep our full time people no matter what. Um, then why does it say here change one account clerk to part time? So okay, so if you That's hire amazing. one of those, if you hire one of those clerks out of their position into the deputy auditor's position, now we have an open clerk's position, which is currently. On so the you don't of, mean change a person here. You mean change right. who you would hire to part time. My yes, I my best. I'm so sorry. No, I knew that it says part. change, change one. I you expect you want to move somebody. And I expect that people partner. will just. Uh, gotcha. I expect that my current police will just shuffle to where they'd like to be or stay where they'd like to be, and then we bring in a part-time person if that makes sense. Okay. All right. I just knew. I thought you were hiring. Yeah, I was so. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, no. I mean, yeah, technically, you are hiring a new deputy auditor because we don't have that position filled currently. But yeah, I yeah. know what you're saying though, because you were just. The you're going to move around inside, and then hire a part time clerk. Yeah, right. And I want to be fair. You know, if, if if we put out applications just as a hypothetical, and we have seventy amazing candidates who are all unemployed right now, and I have to come back to you guys and say, hey. I actually think we should have these three full time because we can't let some of these people go. You know, they just came from the they running the Lancaster Income Tax Division or whatever, whatever it is. I know those people. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. I just. I mean, like, I'll come back to you, <laughs> but I expect that in the current setup, there'll be some shuffling, and then we'll hire for a part time position. Okay. I just can't. I don't want to say it's a. So actually, position. from what we had before, when we had, you know, two girls, you well. A guy, two girls, and a guy. That was four. Now that one of the girls are gone, we have three, and then the one you hired would be part time. So we're technically cutting out half. Yeah, correct. Right. right. I finally got it. Yep. Yeah, sorry. that's what we've been saying all along. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry if I didn't get that. I, maybe I should have went right for the jugular on this one. But <laughs> well, I like I like how that position though is going to serve more of the city as a whole. So I think that's 
I'm excited about that. And I, I just think that um, I'm all I'm all in for Nelson Bill. So I think that any customer related, you know, service that we can provide our folks is good. I think that we've missed out for a long time. So I'm and I think to... like if, if something changes and like there's so much work going on in town, let's say that Nelsonville is in this booming era for the next decade. Obviously I'll come back to you guys and be like, well, we need more help because yeah. there's too much to process. But I think in our current situation, considering what we just went through as an auditor's office and where we can be in a year, I my opinion is this is a great move forward for us and would hope council would agree. I'm okay. All right, good. So it looks like you only have one other item, maybe health insurance. Yeah. Is this one okay to bring to full council or? I'm okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Who's your who's our health care insurance right now? Erie, isn't it? Who is it? Isn't it Erie insurance? Uh, no, no, no. So are we have we have. Oh. It is. It is called Ohio Small Groups Pool, which is a consortium with other local governments like the Regional Jail, Perry County, Belpre, City of Belpre. It is so that's what it's called, Ohio Small Groups Pool. It is part of some bigger network, which is administered by Care Factor. I don't know if that helps. When I go to the doctor, I tell them care factor okay. is how they find me. Um, so health insurance, I hate to end on health insurance, but it's the last thing. Mm -hmm. um, I found out in a secondary meeting, we did a one-on-one, -on -one, or I did a one-on-one -on -one with our uh, part of our plan. This is one nice part of our current plan. They provide us a benefits counselor, did they call themselves? Yes. It's like a law firm in Athens, it's Snyder, Fuller, and Stroh, and they're here just to help answer questions for administration. They're, they're a, yeah, they're an insurance company, not a law firm. Or insurance company, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I heard the three names and I thought, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, so I spoke with, uh, I think it was Snyder actually, Mark is his name, does it sound right? And so we had a one-on-one, -on -one. he wanted to just go through over like, what Nelsonville faces. And he was like, you know, you guys got a new, Council president, new auditor, new council, new city manager. Would it be helpful to have a one-on-one -on -one and then come to a council meeting? And I was like, yes, please, because I have no health insurance experience. The bad news is the 15% increase starts July 1st this year. I thought insurance was on a calendar year. Apparently they're on a July 1st. Yeah, yeah, it's a July. And I had, did not know that. If that's my naivete showing, my bad. Um, so the 15% premium increase, we are going to pay whether we like it or not um, through next July 1st, 2021. So roughly for 2020, that's a $40,000 increase for the full 365 days. It's like 57 or something we had. So only about the 20 grand increase we would see on this calendar year in this budget. Rosie. Uh, around 40. The conference. Around 44 this calendar year, and then like around 57 or something for the full 365 days. If hey, folks, sense. we had uh, someone enter the room just so you're aware. Okay. Um, I actually I didn't do. Rosie has left the conference. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Didn't want to talk. <clears throat> so it's a big increase. 15 percent of the premium increase is by the employees. Um, so what we talked about was our contract is through 2021, July 1st. I asked them, which was the last day council could say, we're done with you guys, forget you. He said December 1st of this year. So in other words, if council would have to have somebody by December 1st that we know we're going to go to, to leave this group next July. I thought that our premium rates were supposed to go, well, we knew there was going to be an increase at first, but then after that, it was supposed, it was to, go supposed to be going down. I remember yeah. that too. <laughs> we yeah. would have talked about this for years ago. It was not going to end up being the way they talked about right. it. Well, so you're right. Yeah, that's how it was advertised. The advertise, advertisement was, because I voted for it. Mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah. The advertisement was, there's a big increase up front to stabilize the fund. And if, if, let's say, uh, premiums around the country are rising 10%, we should expect like 4%. We should keep coming under the national average. Not This did not happen. So the national average this year, I think he said, was 13%, and we're going up 15 I, I told him I was very dissatisfied with the increase, and I knew council probably would be too. But is your coverage good? Uh, 
So Scott and I have, we have two opinions on this. Scott sees it from a lot of the employees who I'm not meaning this offensive to anyone or anything that works here are a different age group than me. It's a really good uh, program, I think, for somebody under the age of 40, and I'd call it average for over the age of 40. Yeah, I, I get it. If that makes sense. When I, go no, to doctor, makes sense. when I go to the doctor, I pay nothing, but I think some of our guys are going to specialist and paying some money. So we changed our health care insurance, and it saved us money. But we had Cigna, we went to United Health, and our premiums got lowered, but our coverage got worse. We're paying $135 doctor visit now until I reach our deductible, where I used to never pay zero. They don't cover any diabetes medicine. So, you know, which the other ones covered it all. Yeah. We definitely need to look around. Yeah, and yes. I don't know if I'd want to go with someone that said it will go down and then it doesn't. Well, yeah. just insurance needs. Definitely the appetite of the employees. They definitely want to shop around. Um, I don't know that they're hard hard line saying that they don't want to keep in the same company, but they definitely want to see what other options are out there because yeah, uh, there's many dissatisfied employees. Oh, I'm sure because, you know, and, and for, you know, healthcare for our younger guys that work for our company, yeah, it's great because they don't use it. Yeah. So they're not paying the higher premium, but, you know, they don't use the coverage. Yeah, and like my insurance card says, I think it says, Seven dollar uh, copay to go to the urgent care. Mm -hmm. I've been twice for an ear infection and a sinus infection since I started. I've paid zero dollars out of pocket. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It I mean it's it's kind of it, they might bill you for it. Yeah, maybe so. But there's been a disconnect between when I've gone, I've paid nothing, but then I hear about some of our guys over the age of forty or fifty, and they've got a specialist visit for eight hundred dollars. Well, mm -hmm. they're paying a hundred sixty dollars a check plus eight hundred dollars. I mean, that's I totally get it. Is what I'm getting. Oh no, yeah. So. so I I, I'm totally, it, the auditor's office has typically handled insurance, so I don't mind saying that I'm totally for shopping around. We just have that December 1st date we're going to want um, to be yeah. ready by. If your coverage is, is very good for, especially for the older group of the city employees, then, you know, it's not worth. So to answer that, yes, we want someone to look into different. Yeah, and, and so my understanding is, is that Somehow, I mean, I don't know who I don't know how Snyder works for us. We don't pay them directly, you but know. he actually said he would help uh, help us shop for other plans if that sure. was on yeah, the table. He gets paid commission based on having the plan. Yeah, so and the maybe, premiums are getting he is getting paid by the way. No, you're right. Probably ongoing through the course of the year from the part of the premium that gets paid. So he should be working for us more than probably what we're asking of him. Right, and you and you probably understand this better than me because your work experience. I I was confused about how he he was able to help us through this current plan and also help us get a new plan. I don't know how the contract works myself, but I do know he said he would be open to doing that uh, starting this summer, um, which would be more enough time. He said within like his office. I want to say he said three or four weeks. Once he starts, he could have a range. Um, I will say I asked him to. I put down plan administrator. I don't think that's his title, but that's who I'm talking about, that firm, to build an alternative plan for employees so that they could have a choice. So they have the standard plan, which is going to have a 15% premium increase. And I basically said to him, is there any way we can, within the same contract, offer something else? And he said, yeah. He said he could have that to me, he hoped, by Friday. He just did say that, you know, if they build a plan that's, say, a 6% increase for the employee, it's probably not going to be as good. And so will everybody take it? I don't know. But I thought this, excuse me, I, I don't know if it's okay to say in a council meeting, I thought this kind of shit sandwich would be not so bad if the employees could at least say, I've got two plans to pick from. Um, it's well, just that the other plan. a different boat. I mean, if you're an individual, you know, there are certain plans that may be beneficial to you versus a family. So, yeah. I and who knows? Maybe there's employees with spouses who they'll end up finding out are better once these increases go in play. I'm not sure. Right. I think that, you know, this probably should even be a decision for council. I think this should be a decision with the employees of the city. And, yeah. you know, we should, as council, vote for what they want. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. So, we've had Absolutely. that problem. And just timing purposes, too. Um, 
they're also renegotiating their contract this year as well toward the end of the year. So, you know, I, I don't know exactly how that would play into it, but uh, I, I definitely appreciate you saying that, Dan, because, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't know that anybody's given a compliment. Most of it's complaining and, you know, with good reason. And a lot of the examples they give, I, it makes me very grateful for the insurance that I have. So, right. yeah. no, I, I get it. We, we've had this situation in years past too, Scott, where we went through a big, you know, undertaking of this, and we had a lot of complaints from city employees, and we did not. Council did not end up going the direction that they wanted to go, which I thought was just it didn't make sense. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and I think yeah, 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 because yeah. There, we have folks that are. You know, with our prescription, I'll tell you, back then it was a lot to do with the prescription plan that was part of the plan. And what happened was nobody seemed to really want to listen to that. And what happened was they made a switch and it ended up costing our employees, you know, more uh, than that, if, you know, that would have, we would have listened to them more. But, um, and so it's just, yeah, so I, I appreciate that too. I think that, uh, you know, we haven't taken into account what their needs are and, uh, you know, again, we're the ones that make the decision, but at the end of the day, it's just, as long as it affects those. It affects them. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not covered by it. So I just wanted to jump in and finish real quick with, I actually told uh, the Ohio Small Groups pool when we met as a pool virtually, uh, would have been before the last council meeting before I reported on it. Um, they kind of pressured me, not Snyder, but the plan administrators, like, hey, does Nelsonville accept these rates? And I told him, I said, I, I don't, I, you just showed me on a, on a spreadsheet, uh, and, and, and there are some valid reasons for the rate increases. There's, in, you know, there's no names attached to any of the data, but they showed data where, you know, your guys' plan is having a higher increase because of two problems. One is we had one patient with double not Nelsonville, the whole group. So it could have been anybody in 15 plans, one employee somewhere with double kidney failure that cost the plan almost half of its total expenses out of all those governments. And that was a huge problem. So what are you gonna do about that? The second one is we have a lot of folks in the whole plan, I assume Nelsonville has some of it, uh, going to the wrong doctors. So when they should be going to an urgent care, they're going to an ER. And when they're going to an urgent care, they should be going to their doctor which costs way more ER costs $1,200 or doctor costs a hundred bucks. Right. So like there's some things we can do. We can educate the employees as we go into a new plan, whatever it is like, Hey, go to urgent care, not the ER. But I think you're totally right. It's gotta be what they want at my age. It's probably going to be good coverage either way. So like, I think like Scott said, I think I'm the only one who's complimented the plan, but it's because I have different needs and I'm going to probably be okay on the other end anyway. Right. Um, and I actually told them on the meeting, I said, if you're talking about the same boat I'm thinking of, I told them, I said, the, the biggest regret I ever had on city council was a health care insurance or health insurance vote that I regret to this day. And so I told them, I said, I'm not giving you a commitment today because that was the biggest mistake of my council time. And I'm not making a second one today. <laughs> so right, like, right. But like, I think shopping is probably our best option. Um, well, and so just to clarify that some I've heard rumors that you know we should we should do what Athens has done. Um, you know the reality is I don't think we would be able to afford what yeah, Athens has done. Yeah. Athens has done a self funding plan where they they took money and set aside yeah. you know to cover healthcare costs. I think five years worth of yeah. Yeah, you know, budgets and, up here. In yeah, schools. and so we we don't have those type of funds to be able to do that. So they, and we they may have amazing insurance, but we don't have the means to self fund like they've done. So yeah, and I, and I this is also still not a dig because we have some of the best around, but I also wouldn't think we would have the distribution of ages that would make that work. Right. Agreed. Right. Um, just because we have a lot of seniority. So um, what, what our company does is we also have one of those guys that any one of our employees can call in and get the advice and you know about this medication or, or you know, hey, they're not really covering this. So that person will try and help get that situated out or uh, give them advice on going to this place or that place. But 
we also get all our employees together up and we have a meeting at health insurance and this guy comes in, he explains, tells them, you know, here's my number. If you have questions, call, you know, you want to do this and he just educates you on what you need to do for your health insurance and, yeah. and why it is that you have the plan you have and what it covers, what your deductibles are. And, and if we get outside of a pool, this is, you know, uh, maybe not needed for tonight's discussion, but I think it would be really helpful to have somebody like that come in and educate mm -hmm. on these are your prescription op options. These are the places locally that are in network because they told me one of the big fouls we have here is we go out of network for everything. So yeah. when well, you could be going to it could be. I mean, it, it, and I get everyone wanting to stay with their doctor. My doctor was out of network here, so I started coming to a different one. Down, I went to a different one in Athens. But those kind of things, I mean, in network, out of network, it's like a 100% difference in price. So when if, we're, if we get out of a pool and we're just getting cost based off ourselves, uh, we're going to want to educate, you know, hey, don't go to the ER, go to the urgent care, don't go to the urgent care, go to the doctor. And make right. sure you go to these doctors because right. I think in the long run that could be hurting us where there's uncertainty about what to do or where to go. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to give you different plans. I'll give you this and lay them out. Yeah. So. Okay. So anyway, that's that's like all I have. I'm glad we got it under two hours. Uh, Miss Grant, next time that is crooked. Oh. <laughs> Would you guys like uh, if Snyder Snyder said if he if council would like, he could come when he gets those dual plan options available to come present them to council. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he should probably present them to Scott and the, and the employees. Okay. I, I think that would be better. It maybe even establish a team of employees, you know, maybe the guys represent, or you pick a couple people to represent them sitting through the different uh, presentations and then they take that back to everybody else. You know, that way they can get all their concerns addressed and, uh, you know, and then also make sure that they compare apples to apples, you know, I mean, it just, right. well, I mean, there's so yeah, many that, loopholes in that stuff, you know, you don't want to buy something that really does any good. Probably help out and try and guide you through those waters. But yeah. again, it's a city employee's choice. Yeah. You know. So Scott, so I can get with you and then when he gets those dual plan options ready for this big increase, we can get folks together and have a little session where he can roll it out and make sure everybody's an understanding of how that'll work and then go from there. Yes, sir. Okay, Carla, anything else? I'm good. Carla, my meeting wasn't this long. What is it? My meeting wasn't this long. My meeting was always long. <laughs> Are you guys want me to shut it down? And I didn't even bring much. Carla, Carla, Carla. Uh, yeah, we're adjourned done. this meeting at 8.50. Shut it down. Yeah, that one was a lot of my fault. Yeah, Scott, we're done.